that tree there. Winnie, hand me that axe. The old man demanded from his son, who was shivering in his boots. The autumn breeze blew through the forest, crawling into the two humans. Lenny wanted to bring a jacket with him before leaving the house, but his father pushed him out before he could grab it. Right now, he's simply wearing a gray t-shirt with some jeans. His father, who had been anticipating this venture, wore a thick blue sweater with some brown sweatpants. The young boy kneeled down and slowly lifted the rusted tool from the ground, hands shaking. He held the axe with both hands, feeling the rough wood scrape against his palms. Little splinters poked through his skin, irritating him. Pop, I don't want to cut the tree down. It's a nice tree, and it didn't hurt nobody. His father narrowed his stern eyes. He stretched his hand towards him, curling his fingers in and out. Lenny glanced back and forth between the hand and his father's face. His face had scars and old age sitting on it, and his scrawny beard sprawled along his jawline and to his ears. His vibrant blue eyes had daring plans gleaming through, which Lenny had inherited. Lenny looked more like his mother, though, with soft features that seem almost feminine. He never liked it when his father acted this way, thinking he could do whatever he want without cause. His bearing presence was always overpowering, though, so he got away with many crimes. It also made him isolated, since people heard rumors of his actions. Lenny, on the other hand, was living with the maniac. The boy sighs, yearning for the time when he was with his mother in, his, in their old cabin. The old man clucked his tongue, and Lenny was brought back to reality. Boy, we got no time to chat. This darn plan has the wood we need to build that dam. It's a beautiful tree, but it's got to go down. Hesitantly, the boy dropped the axe into his father's hands and backed away. He put his index fingers in his ears, not wanting to hear the tree breaking into pieces. The boy thought that the sound of splintering wood was like the tree's deathly shrieks. The man raised the axe all the way back, preparing to swing. All of a sudden, a strange voice interrupted him. Don't hurt the tree. The old man spun around, trying to pinpoint the voice. Then he moved his fingers away and also looked for it. Why should I listen to a coward? Come out where I can see you. A pale girl slipped out of the surrounding forest, her eyes tainted with a dark green. Her silver nightgown was tattered, and her feet were raw. Lenny gapped at her, fascinated and terrified. She merely glanced at the boy, for her attention was on the man with the axe. Humans have used trees for centuries and the plants have never minded. It's their cycle to grow until they stop and to die back into birth. But that tree there... She pointed to the creature in front of them. ...will not die for the means of resources. Lenny's eyes widened in fear, and he ripped his stare to look at his father. His heartbeat sped up when he saw him roll his eyes. Oh, that's a load of crap! It's a stupid tree! It doesn't have any feelings! I'm the bigger man here, and I need some timber. The stubborn man leaned the axe against his groin and spat in both of his hands, a habit of his before chopping. Thoughts raced through Lenny's mind. Why is she here? Why does she look like this? Where does she come from? She's not normal, is she? The boy clutched his hair with both hands, little brown tufts peeking out. I warned you, if you don't listen to me, misfortune will only come. The ghastly girl turned to Lenny, and her stare struck a bolt of dread into him. The young boy was getting more and more anxious. He had to stop his father. Papa, please don't touch that tree! There's plenty more in the forest! I don't want anything bad happening to us! Please, Papa! His father wasn't listening to him. He raised the axe once more, arms bulging with veins. All was still, and silence smothered the three figures. The man waited for the right moment to attack. When it came to him, he swung the weapon with all his might. Lenny covered his ears and shut his eyes, expecting the hollow noise of wood shattering. He waited, and waited, but nothing was smashed, nothing was chopped. Only an eerie quiet kept him company. He gently opened his eyes and ears and gasped. Where his father had stood, 
there is now a mangled corpse. The form was pierced by hundreds of thick, sharp needles. They stabbed all over the body, through the heart, through the head, through the thorax. Nothing was left untouched, as if a meticulous decorator wanted to use all of his pins. The smell of iron and shredded organs filled the air, trailing behind the river of blood that seeped out. Looking closer, the needles were actually spindly roots, now covered in human flesh. The son of the dead man fell to his knees, splashing some blood onto his face. He wanted to cry out, but his throat closed up. It opened to bile and then he puked. After several minutes of sobbing and puking, the girl came up to him. She squatted next to the boy, her eyes bearing into him. She brought her translucent lips to her his ear and whispered, Don't ever come back here and make sure no one hurts that tree there.